Today marks the first time in 20 years that a DFLer is in the governor's seat. And with a Republican controlled state legislature, Dayton says his job won't be easy. It feels like it's suctioning on me. It'll, it'll squeeze you where you don't want to be squeezed. <laughs> Out here in the middle of Chewamigan Bay, the ice is a few feet thick, but around the edges where it's thinner and the ice fishers congregate, a simple change in weather could be cause for alarm. A $43.5 million investment. With that money, the co-op will lay down 915 miles of fiber optic cable. To put that in perspective, this is only about a mile. But all laid down together, it creates a huge network delivering information at the speed of light. Northern Lakes Food Bank distributes about 4 million pounds of food each year. But given the chance to basically give out more unprocessed food, they jumped at the healthy opportunity. The affected area lies along and beneath this area of Chewamigan Bay, just west of the Ordock. And the EPA mandated cleanup won't be cheap. What's for sure is this. No one's taking a bath with this stuff. This tiny one gram package set me back $50. That's comparable to what a gram of cocaine costs. But scientists say these bath salts are actually closer to a different drug. The zoning change would also mean a grocery store could be built in the area. One up to 50,000 square feet. That's about the size of a normal super one. Because of frigid temperatures, the veterans decided to stay inside their van to stay cozy like those resting dogs. But they did give her some advice before her final leg of the race. Open up a can of whoop ass and haul ass. That's what he told me, word for word. Some industry analysts predict that gas could reach as high as $5 per gallon this year. We're not there yet, but in the Northland, it's definitely getting higher. In fact, the Australian government recently punished power balance in their country by making them run a corrective advertisement. It said, quote, we admit there is no credible scientific evidence that supports our claims. On Monday, this was a passable road. Today, that's just not the case. Neighbors estimate the lake has risen about three feet, and now officials are assessing the situation. We're saving it right now. Emergency officials cared for Teresa Sorensen's kitten in the pouring rain at the scene of a laundromat fire. I haven't got to see my cat that they revived yet. Yesterday, she not only lost her pet, her apartment and everything in it is also a complete loss. It's a wreck. Although yesterday's fire gutted this building, it only strengthened the bond between neighbors, a friendship that remained clear even through thick smoke. I could already hardly breathe. When the smoke hit me, and she risked her own life to come and get me and my family out. She calls her neighbor her savior, the first in the building to realize something was wrong. And I could smell smoke, so I ran over to the window and here there was flames coming up. I didn't care, I didn't grab anything, I just took off. Room to room she ran, banging on neighbors' doors as a human alarm. Because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have made it out, especially with my lung disease. I could already hardly breathe. The Red Cross is offering room and clothing to the fire victims, but Sorensen doesn't know what will happen when the aid runs out. All she knows is she wants a reunion with her injured kitten, now missing after the fire. <laughs> they said he was kind of nibbling. <laughs> That's what he does. He likes to nibble. <laughs> In Duluth with photojournalist Jeff Ernawine, I'm Jacob Kittlestad, Fox 21 News. Singing praises to a forgotten World War II veteran, Senator Al Franken's staff pins shining medals to an 86-year-old shirt. How old were you when you were fighting there? 19. His entire life, Army Staff Sergeant Walter King went without award from the federal government for his military service. Well, I landed at Normandy Beach. And then I fought all my way up to the bowls. So he doesn't say too much. He said there was some horrible, horrible things he had to do. Wounded in Europe, he returned to the U.S., but the battle continued at home. You know, the, he would wake up screaming at night. I dreamt about it a lot. It was always on my mind. Lucille Stepik watched her brother lose his family and health. Knowing his sacrifice, she requested a search for King's undelivered medals. After two weeks, Frank and staff pulled through. He felt like he did a job overseas and he wasn't asking for anything in return, but of course we owe him a lot more than the medals we got him today. Struggling through decades of remembering the war, today these medals find his lapel and without a moment to spare. He has cancer and uh, uh, he's terminal, so 
at least I know I did something for him, you know, that he wanted those so bad. Oh, well, I didn't think it ever happened. <laughs> what up, huh? During the ceremony at his nursing home, King's sister tears up. He's just a wonderful man. I can't say enough about it. He really is. But the adornments won't give closure to the post-traumatic stress. No, it never will. In Cook with photojournalist Jeff Ernawine, I'm Jacob Kittlestad, Fox 21 News. Putting letters into their mailboxes... Gloria Schrammick heard shrieks cut through her Monday delivery route. Screaming, she's dead, she's dead. It looked like he just had a doll in his hand. You know, she was so little. An infant. This is a beautiful little baby. Struggling to breathe. And I could see her lips were blue. I knew that it was a choking situation. Remembering CPR training. I started heading that way. I had all my mail yet in my hand. She swabbed the baby's mouth with her finger and performed a few chest compressions. At that point, I started doing mouth to mouth. I don't know how long it was. It seemed like an eternity. It was probably seconds. Then EMTs arrived. I remember him saying he had a pulse. Yeah, Eight-month-old Ara was saved, her mother Tamara Grew said, because of the quick response. They found that there was something in her lungs and they had put, in, put something down her throat and pulled out a popcorn kernel. The mail carrier spotted the mother who was frantic with fear as she ran to a next door neighbor's house. I thought that I was gonna lose her and I didn't know um, what my life would have been like afterwards. And although this sort of thing isn't really expected of postal workers, Gloria says she's just happy she could deliver some help along with the mail. I don't know if they expected any more from a mailman than they do from somebody walking down the street, but I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Anybody that knew what they were doing that could help, I guess. I was thankful for because I didn't know what to do. A mail carrier's good deed returning Ara's smile back to her family's home. In Superior with photojournalist Harry Baker, I'm Jacob Kittlestad, Fox 21 News.